Hi, in this video I'm gonna match four cameras together because I just shot a video where I used a GH5, A7 III, Mavic Pro 1 and GoPro Fusion. So now we need to match them together and I will teach you how I do that. So we'll be matching these cameras together with two different methods, a free and a slow method, and then with the more accurate and fast method. And these methods are no hacks or tricks. These are kind of, I'm trying to teach you kind of a deeper understanding of color here so that you are better equipped with color matching in general. So before we start, uh, let me explain you uh, why uh, colors are different from camera to camera. Okay, let me try and explain it like this. Here we have a, a blue notebook and let's call this surface color, let's call it notebook blue. And this notebook, notebook blue is always the same color regardless of which camera you shoot it with, of course. But when you shoot it with different cameras, it ends up being different color on your computer. And there's four, different for, uh, four reasons for that. The first reason why this ends up being different is that you might have different white balance, uh, dynamic range, exposure and contrast settings between your cameras. The second reason is that if you're shooting in log profiles, uh, professional cameras, uh, those profiles shoot the same color into different color spaces. And uh, to put it uh, shortly, a color space is kind of like a standard for color values and on what, what values does this one color uh, have. And when you look at those log footage, uh, raw log footage, I mean uh, uncreated log footage, uh, this same blue has very different uh, values depending on what color profile you shot it with. But if you do proper color correction, you start off with, with this one color, you end up having many different blues, and when you do color correction, then it, uh, they uh, should become the same blue, same as the surface color again after color correction. And then the third reason is that different camera models have different sensors inside them, and different sensors see uh, light spectrums slightly differently. When we're shooting in sunlight or in tungsten, that is not a problem. But when we are shooting, for example, in fluorescent lighting, fluorescent light has a very uh, kind of tricky spectrum, and cameras have a hard time on seeing that same spectrum the same way. And uh, that's why some cameras might have a very different color when you're shooting with cheap uh, LED lights or uh, in full fluorescent lighting. But in sunlight and in tungsten light, that should not be a problem. And the fourth reason is that different camera models apply an unknown and unique stylizing to the video file, making them look better. Because, well, accurate color actually doesn't look so interesting. We're kind of custom on seeing stylized looks. So uh, these cameras make uh, these uh, video files more stylized. Every, every uh, model makes it their own unique way. Well, of course, if, if the camera manufacturer standardizes these cameras, they might be the same, but at least different uh, camera brands make the stylizing very differently from camera to camera. Okay, so these things are not necessarily uh, important for you to remember, but these are good for you to understand if you want to dive deep dive into color correction and color matching in general. Okay, so let's start uh, with the methods. And first we're gonna do like this uh, free and slow method. And for that, I shot some uh, footage on, on the windowsill and uh, I shot it with the GH5 using the natural profile and the Sony a7 III uh, using the CNF4 profile and Pro Color. And uh, I'm using the X-Rite Color Passport here, but it's not necessarily for the, um, for the method. It just has a lot of nice color, so that's why I uh, included it in the frame. And uh, I set the exposure to be same between these cameras and then I set the white balance to be same uh, between these cameras. So we get as close uh, together as possible uh, right on, on camera with these uh, settings. 
So uh, here we have these uh, two settings, uh, two clips in Premiere, and I'm using Premiere for this, but the same tools that I'm using here, you can find them in any software, Resolve or Final Cut, so you can do the same things in those softwares. Just try to understand the principles and then apply the same things to your program. So here we have uh, these two clips side by side, and in Premiere we have this nice tool, Comparison View, you can find it here in the plus and just drag it, drag it here to the time, uh, like what is this uh, toolbar, and then uh, then you can uh, see the uh, footage next to each other, and you can even compare it like this if you want to. So anyway, so here we have uh, the GH5, and here we have Sony, and I think the GH5 has better color out of the camera, so I'm gonna match the Sony to the GH5. And uh, uh, okay, let's uh, start. So here, let's see what I've already done. So here's how I already did. Let's do this again in a, in a, uh, quickly, uh, shortly. But uh, here, how I uh, ended up uh, matching them. And by pressing this, I can toggle them back and forth. And you can see that uh, this, uh, well, the bokeh is uh, different in the full full frame camera than in the uh, uh, GH5. But other than that, they seem to match quite well. Of course, the sun moved slightly, so the shadows are slightly different and such, but uh, they look quite good. So let's do this from scratch. Let me reset uh, this uh, Lumetri effect, and let's start from scratch. Okay, so when I'm doing color correction, um, I mean color grading, uh, what is this? Color matching, I follow a four-step uh, formula, kind of four-step, um, well, four steps. First. I set the exposure and contrast to be same between cameras. And then after setting the contrast and exposure to be the same, uh, after that I do overall white balance, so kind of uh, seeing why, where is the color in overall, where is the color difference in overall in these images using the white balance sliders. And then I check if the saturation, overall saturation is the same. And after that the fourth step is to do luma, hue and saturation uh, modification to individual colors. So um, let me show you how I do it in practice in, in Premiere Pro. And by the way, that's just one thing that I forgot to say. When, you shoot, when you're trying to match your footage, you should always uh, try to, um, well, in general, in, in when you're shooting in uh, whatever you're shooting, uh, I would uh, recommend trying to avoid clipping so that uh, nothing clips in your footage. Because if, if the footage clips, so if you make it too white, then uh, the information is lost, and if the other camera is clipped and the other one is not, you cannot really match them together because on the other one you don't have the information to match to the other one. So try to have that in mind. Okay, and um, other than that, I'm not going to actually use the scopes because I like to use my eyes. And this little tool, this is actually a very handy tool. I don't know if I, uh, how much I'm going to use it in this tutorial, but this this is my scopes. So and this is uh, just this tool. Let me show this classic color meter, uh, which is for Mac. If you're using Windows, you can use this Just Color Picker. Just, just Google this and you'll find this. Okay, let's go back to Premiere. And with this, you can measure whatever is underneath your cursor. For example, this leaf, I can see the hue, so the primary color. Saturation is, well, the color saturation and lightness of this leaf here. And, well, that one pixel that is underneath the cursor. And uh, with this, I can easily uh, kind of check if this color is the same as this, and which direction should I go. For example, the hue is 88, and here the hue is 123. So I know that I should uh, decrease the hue to get these to match, if I want the hue to match, and so on. But okay, let's. I just wanted to introduce you to this, and I might not even use it now, but maybe if I do, you know what it is and where to get that. So let's start with this. So first, the first step was to uh, set the exposure and contrast to be the same. And I like to do that in black and white state. So having the uh, image in black and white, and then uh, it's easy to have the split view to uh, see, the, uh, see it like this here. So let's start to uh, set the exposure and white balance to be the same. And I already have the settings here uh, recorded, so we don't need to sp spend time trying to figure out. So I'm going to uh, increase the, oops, not here, that's not the right one. We need to go to the clip, this one here, and yes. So I'm going to add uh, the exposure, 0.7, and then I'm going to um, go to the curves, and in the curves I'm going to just slightly lift up in the midtones, about this, something like that, and let's see how does it look. Let's see how this leaf looks. Well, here you can see that the 
uh, the bokeh makes it look less contrasty but other than that it seems to be pretty much the same and here yeah we're pretty much the same and the board or the table seems to be pretty much the same of course you can do this to be totally perfect but i'm happy with this and now i'm going to uh, take off the white and black white white and black black and white layer and next i'm going to start doing the overall white balance uh, um, kind of settings and uh, here i can see that this is cooler and this is warmer so i'm going to call it the temperature and i'm going to add a bit of temperature and then I think the tint should be slightly less because I think this is slightly greener. So I'm going to have minus point, uh, 1.2. And now they are quite okay. And then I think the saturation is quite okay. So now we have done like we have done the three parts: exposure and contrast, overall white balance, and then saturation, overall saturation. So now we'll go to the fourth step, which is fixing individual colors. And let's see, for example, this, um, uh, what is this uh, plant seems to be very different. And if we uh, measure the colors here, you can see that this is 81 and this is 100, uh, 105 somewhere there. So there's a quite big, uh, big hue difference here. And to fix that, I'm gonna use uh, these new tools in Premiere Pro C, uh, CC 2019. So let's go about here. And let's remove this and now okay let's make this if, if I press this I can see that up will make it warmer and down will make it cooler so I think we're gonna uh, put it up something like that and let's see how it looks this is cool and I don't like how it's making this uh, be too much orange or uh, like too uh, yellow so I think we need to bring this side down so we're uh, making sure that we only affect where we want the effect to be. And now, if we compare, they match better. Now it's more uh, orange. And well, if you want to uh, spend your whole life doing this, you're welcome, but I'll think that's okay. And then next, let's go and fix this uh, orange uh, jar. And okay, let's get it just there in the middle. Something like that. And then let's see what is the difference. So the hue is 3 and here the hue is 1, so that's kind of pretty much in the same ballpark. But this, the saturation, as you can see from here, the saturation is 31 and here is uh, something is slightly... Is it the same? I think it, this looks slightly less saturated than this. This is 6 and 4, 35 and... So I guess we could push this up uh, the saturation slightly up to make them similar. So I'm going to again, again go and select this color and let's see if we actually managed to get got it no we didn't manage to cut it so oh well okay it's on the on the left side of this so let's add a slightly longer gri gra uh, grasp let's remove this and now let's push the shadow uh, the saturation of this color slightly up how much maybe that much let's see how it looks now where's my cursor there 35 and 35 okay we got it pretty much the same so so that was the fourth step of fixing individual colors for example you could do this the same with skin tone as well okay so now we got them to be let's see how uh, close did we got so I think we got a quite good job. Well, the plan should use a bit more work. But this one looks good and the jar looks good. And the colors on the Axrite color uh, checker, they don't have a big difference. Of course, you could continue doing this forever, but I think we are uh, good enough. Uh, that's good enough. Okay, so that was the method number one. And uh, this is kind of slow because you need to do this for each clip individually. Uh, because there might be differences in the camera, like you might have a, a slightly different outer balance, uh, outer white balance in, in your camera, so different exposure and so on. So you need to do this separately for each uh, clip pair. So it, that's why it's quite slow. Let's do the method number two. And uh, in back Premiere, I have uh, these four clips from the intro, from the beginning of this video. And uh, this first one was shot with the DJI Mavic Pro 1 in D-Log profile. 
This other one was shot with the Sony a7 III in Hybrid Log 3, and we have GH5, V Log L, and then we have uh, the GoPro Fusion in the flat profile. And this method, we're going to use the color correction kit for the GH5. And if you are an, a, new, a new viewer on this channel, uh, that is a, a kit, uh, like it's a package of lookup tables that I have created um, to, for, uh, to color correct, color grade, and color match your footage when you're using GH5. And I have been using GH5 for quite a long, so long time, so this is a pack that I've created for myself, but you can get that as well. Uh, there's a link in the description to this web page where you can see these comparisons, you can see how these lookup tables work. And in this kit, we have these matching uh, lookup tables as well. And the reason why these lookup tables are more accurate is that I have shot kind of uh, these, I have created these matching lookup tables in very controlled environment using many different exposures and many different white balances on my camera. But you still need to do um, a kind of um, some things in post. For example, if the settings in your camera were not identical, which is very difficult on set to have identical settings on your cameras. So then you need to still you need to do uh, some work in post, but uh, it's much easier with these lookup tables. These lookup tables will do the heavy lifting for you. And I want to mention here that uh, this kit that I'm going to use here is for the GH5, uh, but soon in a couple of weeks there will be a Sony color correction kit as well for Sony cameras. Okay, so let's start with the color correction. Uh, and uh, here we had these uh, uh, different cameras uh, queued up in the Premiere. And uh, I decided that the GH5 has the best color, so I added this marker here, and this is going to be our hero frame. This is going to be the frame that the other cameras will be uh, matched to. So uh, let's uh, start, and I'm going to start with the Mavic. And uh, yeah, so uh, now you will kind of see how the kit works and what kind of things I do, and I'm still doing the four-step process of uh, exposure contrast, white balance, saturation, and individual colors. So. Um, this is uh, Mavic Pro and it's D-Log1, so I'm going to apply a lookup table from the color correction kit to turn Mavic Pro 1 D-Log to V-Log. And after that I'm going to go to the creative tab and I'm going to apply one of the lookup tables from the color correction kit to turn V-Log into uh, Rec 709, which is the kind of standard color space on internet for videos. And I'm just going to choose the color 3. And uh, here we can already see, let's bring up this comparison view and let's compare these together. And here it's very evident that the exposure on the, uh, uh, on the Mavic was much lower. So uh, let's start with the first step, which is the overall exposure and contrast settings. And again, I'm gonna use the black and white layer to kind of see better uh, the difference in uh, contrast and exposure. And then I think they uh, are pretty much in the same ballpark. And of course, you need to understand that there's so much bokeh on this one that uh, it looks that it has less contrast because this doesn't have any bokeh. So that's thing that you need to consider. And actually, we go to the curves and we uh, could do this kind of um, kind of lift up the shadows slightly. So I'm gonna lock this, and I'm gonna lift up the shadows just slightly up like this. And let's add another marker and. Um, making the curve sure that the curves stay flat and this will kind of lift up the uh, shadows uh, on the Mavic Pro footage slightly. And now we'll uh, look into the kind of overall uh, color um, like white balance and to my eye this is uh, clearly warmer so I'm gonna um, remove a bit of warmth so 12.9 and here's an important thing that I want to mention that I'm applying this kind of the uh, this color correction lookup table here in the creative tab so that we are able to do these color modifications in vlog because for this lookup table there's two lookup tables here first one is in the basic color correction tab and the second one is in the creative tab so this one will turn the footage into vlog and now we're doing these settings in vlog color space and for example these sliders work so much better in vlog color space than in this random color spaces that the camera shoot in. Okay, so then I'm gonna leave the tint together and I think they are... Yeah, they're there. I might go to the curves and lift up the shadows just a bit because I think that will make them look slightly uh, more uh, like similar. And let's make sure that the upper part of the curve stays flat. And let's see how that looks. 
it's kind of like this, it looks there's a bit of fog in there. And now that I lifted up the shadow slightly, it makes the shadows look a bit foggy. And just an extra thing, I think I'm just going to want to add slightly a bit blue into the shadows, because here we can see that the fog makes the shadows slight blue, slightly bluish. So it's just a bit of blue into the shadows, something like that. And here you go, now we get a bit of that blue. But now I think it's a bit too much, so I'm going to bring this slightly down. Okay, you can tweak this forever, so let's continue. So now we have the Mavic uh, matched, so next, next, next let's go to the Sony, and this is the Hybrid Log Gamma 3. And with this, let's start with the uh, lookup tables. So I'm going to apply, actually we're working on the wrong one, so this one. First I'm going to apply um, a, a A7 III Hybrid Log Gamma to V-Log, and now we are in V-Log color space, and then I'm going to apply the color tool lookup table and now we have done the basic matching but now we need to do our kind of we, we uh, will uh, do a bit more better matching here and let's see let's uh, first put it to black and white these are the settings that i kind of found after playing around and okay now i think we're good with the kind of overall uh, contrast and now let's look at overall saturation. And I think this is this seems to be slightly uh, more saturated. So let's bring the overall saturation down. And I'm going to bring it down maybe 15%. Let's see what look would look good. So something like, yeah, 15% would be quite nice. Okay, and then um, let's see at the highlights. I think this highlights look slightly... Um, uh, like magenta slightly, so let's go and uh, fix those with these color wheels. So here in the highlights area, I can I will push uh, this slightly towards green, something like that. I think that's that's good. And then I think uh, because this lookup table might be limiting the highlights, I think because here you can see that they are ninety, the highlights are ninety. Here they are 93, so I'm going to bring up the highlights slightly up and I'm going to do with the curves uh, uh, setting and I don't want to affect the shadows, so I'm going to clip the shadows and then I'm going to bring this kind of clipping point slightly to the red, uh, right or left and now it's uh, 40, 45 and it's here is 43, so now they are pretty much the same. And then I'm going to start going into uh, the individual colors and I think in this case, for some reason, we got the skin tone slightly off. So it's 30, uh, 26 here, and 30. Uh, so the values here are uh, 25, 40, and here they are 20 and 30. So this is uh, kind of has slightly uh, more hue and 10% more saturation. And to fix that, I'm going to go to these curves and I'm going to uh, bring down the uh, skin tone saturation. So I'm going to Pick this tool, click here, and let's see if we got it. Maybe like this. And then let's go to the hue versus hue. And now I think I will uh, bring this slightly towards blue. So now it looks more healthy. The skin tone looks more healthy. Okay, and yeah, that's it. So now let's go to the GoPro and let's match this GoPro flat. And uh, because this was GoPro flat, we're not going to turn this profile into vlog. We're just going to go here to the creative and we're going to apply this um, GoPro Fusion flat uh, base to base one and it makes it look like this and let's do the same trick here. The first step is to kind of set the exposure to be uh, similar and then I want to uh, kind of, as you can see here, if I bring this measurement here to the white part, it's at uh, 88 and this is uh, kind of because of the lookup table, this one, this lookup table is trying to make the highlight roll off very smooth and filmic. So I want to fix that. So after this uh, lookup table, not before, but after the lookup table, I'm going to go here and I'm going to um, kind of lock the shadows area and I'm going to just bring the white point slightly to the left, making uh, these highlights more white. So let's see where they are now. 37, that's good. So now not 100 yet, but that's good. And then I think I want to have the same thing as with the Mavic footage, that I want to make the shadow slightly milky. That often gives an impression of some kind of a hipstery uh, uh, film uh, vibe. 
So something like that. So I'm bringing the black point up. Okay, and now let's turn off the white, white and black. And now let's just look at the uh, color in general. And I think we could make it slightly cooler. So I'm just looking at this and trying to kind of get a feel. Like how does it, it feel more warm? So let's bring the temperature to minus three. And then I think it's slightly greenish. So let's bring that to plus three. And then I'm just going to look at the overall feel of it. And I think I could bring the highlights up slightly. And maybe the contrast up a bit. Something like that. And now I think they match quite well. Uh, might, might the saturation be a bit too much? Let's check the skin tones. Well, it's a different person and the skin tones are... Well, you get the, you get the kind of overall idea. 33. And here... 33. It's. I would say that this should be because this is a Caucasian guy. I think the white should be the, the saturation overall saturation would be slightly down. And I think now that we have done the first part, the exposure and contrast, uh, the second one white balance, and then the overall saturation. I think these look pretty much. Yeah, they got good. I can do this forever. So just get the idea. The fourth steps were uh, overall contrast and exposure. Then your uh, white balance and overall tone and then your uh, kind of overall saturation and then your individual colors uh, fixing like skin tones, leaves, sky color, highlight or shadows. So those four steps and you will be able to uh, get a very nice uh, look. But if you want to learn more about color correction, I recommend you to go in the, in the link, or there's maybe a link here floating around, and join the free course on color correction and color grading. And uh, one thing that I want to mention again is that I'm releasing a Sony color correction kit that's gonna be in a few weeks. So just keep subscribed to the channel and you'll be notified. Okay, I think that's it for this tutorial. Thank you and see you in the next one. Bye.